Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Philip Miller. I have a facial plastic surgery practice in New York City, and uh, I'd like to speak today about post-operative rhinoplasty instructions. Now, it's important for you to know right, uh, right off the bat, if you will, that, that these instructions are number one, specifically for my patients, and they may conflict with the instructions that you've been given by your own physician. Please call your own physician, ask them to clarify their post-operative instructions um, because not everyone has the same post-operative instructions and it's, not import and it's important for you to follow the instructions of your own physician. Um, these, are, these are mine and uh, I, I put this video together uh, to, re uh, to sort of reinforce the instructions uh, because I do go over them at your first post-operative visit but I want to make sure that you have access to them uh, and to go over them. Um, first of all, it's important to know that over the next three months, uh, your nose will change shape and size, sometimes even daily. So not, do not be alarmed by that. Um, you, you will notice typically the bridge might develop a little fullness. That will go down. The tip will uh, always be very, very swollen right after the uh, immediate cast is removed and that will take time um, to really decrease in swelling as well as forming what I call contracture. Now there's two different processes post-operatively. There's the skin uh, losing the swelling and at the same time or uh, uh, um, the skin beginning to contract much like a shrink wrap effect and that could take anywhere from six months up to a year. I've seen it even a year and a half. So. Uh, often I tell my patients, uh, you'll hear me say, uh, the treatment for your concern is patience. I'm not disregarding your concern. Um, uh, I'm not minimizing it, but the treatment for it is patience. Um, uh, you don't need to sleep uh, elevated anymore. Uh, you can, at this point, this is a week post-operatively. Uh, uh, however, recognize that uh, in the morning your nose will be swollen. Uh, and as, over the course of the day, it will be less swollen. Uh, if you are uh, uh, very, very swollen, then I want you to stop your activity or slow down your activity. When do you return to activities? Typically at around two weeks. Uh, sometimes it can be four weeks, depending upon the surgery that you had, and we'll discuss that, but typically at around two weeks. I recommend you look in the mirror, see how swollen you are, then engage in your activity, and if you're more swollen after the activity, then stop it, wait five days, and then you can repeat it again and see whether or not at that point the swelling has um, uh, stopped and that you can resume at least that level of activity. Uh, you can blow your nose uh, one to two, uh, uh, approximately uh, at, again at week two, although you can sniff back in order like that in order to clear your nose. If you've been using saline spray, continue using that, although it's not uh, necessary, and you can stop using the peroxide or the bacitracin at this point. Um, uh, another phrase that I mention frequently is focus on what it looks like, not what it feels like. That's, of course, what's key. And so as you feel the healing nose, you may feel some ridges or bumps or depressions, and that doesn't play a role in the long-term result. What matters ultimately, as I mentioned, is really the way it looks, not the way it feels. Uh, you can return to your supplements and your vitamin regimen if you're on that. Um, if you have incisions, they will be red for several weeks. They will then uh, fade to pink and then it will gradually fade to blend with the rest of your skin. Uh, we have an excellent uh, product I may have mentioned. It's called Biocornium here in the office, but you can purchase over-the-counter silicon um, tubes. I don't recommend any one in particular, but um, uh, there are very there, there are anti-scar uh, uh, products at uh, any of the uh, major drug stores uh, and you can use that in order to uh, uh, be proactive in decreasing the amount of scarring that is associated with any incisions should they be on the outside. Obviously don't use it for any incisions placed on the inside of the nose. Um, I should have uh, assessed the weight of your glasses at your post-operative visit. Typically 
Um, if they're about as light as a, a, a mm -hmm. wired sunglass, uh, then that's fine for you to wear. But if you have any concerns, then I want uh, you to contact me in case I didn't explain it uh, or didn't clarify it at your post-operative visit. And of course, it's, it's unnecessary unless I performed osteotomies or uh, the bone fractures uh, um, to narrow the facial plane. Uh, return to your normal facial uh, washing, moisturizer, and makeup routine. Um, if you have any deterioration in your sense of smell, that's due to swelling on the inside of your nose, be patient. It returns, uh, maybe at a few weeks at most. Um, it, the bruising, if you have any, uh, will resolve slowly. You may notice that the bruising, again, if you have any, most patients do not. Uh, it will eventually uh, sort of start falling, if you will, from here and then come down the middle of the face. Uh, the, the very dark blue part being always at the bottom and then it gradually lightens as it, uh, as it, um, uh, as it is brought back up to where it originally, originally started. Uh, uh, ne finally, um, uh, my fellow and I are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to call the office. I encourage you to call if you have uh, any questions, but also if you want some reassurances about any of the post-operative instructions in your post-operative course. And finally, to reiterate again, uh, these instructions are for my patients. They do not necessarily apply to all patients, uh, and so please check with your own physician to make sure that you're following your specific post-operative care.